Hello, and welcome to our guided tour of our manga collection. This is Harley. And Dylan. And we are going to just show off our newly built manga library room. Um, during the pandemic, we had some time to finally start putting this together, putting our collection all in one place, and had a local carpenter uh, construct these shelves. The library room is uh, 11 feet, 3 inches, or 343 centimeters at its highest, the roofs are sloped, and then 9 foot, 9 inches, 298 centimeters uh, towards the rear. And here we are just panning over our collection. We'll go through this individually. Um, we've been collecting since 1993, when we were in junior high school. Yeah, 12 years old. And we'll show in a moment here how our collection began in the 1990s uh, graphic novels or tankoban were not as standard as they've become today um, here we see some of our Japanese books some of our art books again we'll delve into these individually here in a moment um, you'll see some of the vintage 90s era books as well but this is our comic book collection. This is how manga was originally sold in, the comic, in the United States in comic book stores. Uh, and then this is the series that uh, launched our interest in manga, uh, Ron No One Half. And so this is what they looked like. Uh, they were just like a normal Marvel or DC comic book. Uh, two chapters per issue coming out monthly. Ranma ran from 1992 to 2002 in this format. Uh, before it was finally uh, shifted to graphic novels like today. 2002 was around the time uh, after Tokyo Pop had come on the scene. Uh, they're the ones that really sort of, I would say, started the trend towards the graphic novel format and away from the comic book format like we're seeing here. Um, over 100 issues, I would say, of Ranma were published this way. Um, along with some other Takahashi books we'll show here in a second. Uh, this is from the Pantyhost Taro chapters that we're looking at here. Ranma ran until the very first chapter with Herb in it before the comic books were discontinued. Uh, after that, it took a few months for them to publish their backlog in the graphic novel format and then transition into just the exclusive uh, blue-covered American editions. And you can see the catalog that Viz had in the back there sort of all their offerings and what they were selling at the time but everything Viz did was sold as a comic book format and Ronma was their huge seller at the time here's an An America Extra Viz also started selling manga as sort of anthology in these magazines An America Extra came out fairly late and we didn't get many of these uh, the ones I did buy I bought for Revolutionary Girl Utena and a few Maison and Coco chapters that I'll talk about later this is pulp though this is a seinen magazine that Viz experimented with and we definitely bought this every month yeah we bought every issue of this yeah. uh, there's a lot of series that we read there that we didn't collect like Bakune Young, Dance Till Tomorrow, Banana Fish, Banana Fish, Voyeurs Inc. that we only have in the magazines and just for financial reasons. Here's know. here's Uzumaki. This is how Junji Ito it was introduced in the United States. Yeah. Uh, and then there was a long, I would say, gap between before he kind of broke through as he has nowadays in 2023 when we're making this video. That's even a monkey can draw manga. A really funny, funny gag strip. This is Shortcuts. Uh, we have a collected volume of this. I'll sh we'll see that. They had good articles as well. In uh, Mostly featured things from Big Comic Spirits and Young Sunday, which are both Shogakukan titles. Big Comic Spirits is what Maison Koku was originally published in, and Young Sunday is what One Pound Gospel was published in for people who are here because of Rumiko Takahashi. This next box then is our other uh, Takahashi comic books. Short stories, Ursayatsura, 
Masonic Koku, Inuyasha. So there's Fire Tripper. As we said, originally they sold everything this way, just as individual issues. And that was first issue of Inuyasha, and here's some early issues of that. The color artwork that they use for the covers comes from Tonko Bonds, comes from Shonen Sunday color pages, and then they would edit a background. Sometimes they would color these themselves, not not often with Inuyasha, but with Maison Koku sometimes, sometimes with Ranma. Here's Urusei Atsura, very first issue. It was more commonly known as Lom, and then The Return of Lom, Urusei Atsura, was more of a subtitle then. Uh, We've talked about this before on Twitter and on the site in various places. Uh, This ran sporadically in the United States from 1998, I mean 1989 to 1998. Uh, It had just a really troubled production history in the United States. Here's Maison Koku. That In America Extra issue in particular is one where one of the edited out chapters, yes, Viz did edit Maison Koku to speed it along. But that's where one of the, uh, the lost, as Viz titled it, chapters was republished after the series ended. So all of these, by 1998, that was when Maison Koku was about to end. It ended its publication run in English as a comic book. Um, you could buy a Takahashi manga, a comic book, every mo- every week of the month. Uh, Ranma in 1998. In 1998, Ranma, Inuyasha, Urusiatsura, before they stopped publishing it, and Maison and Koku, which was really fun. We used to pick them up uh, weekly at our comic shop. So now, again, this is just sort of showing you where we're going to start in our collection here on the left-hand wall. Uh, the wall opposite this uh, is just normal books, not n- non-manga, so we won't take a look at that. So we're up here in the heavens now above the uh, the, the fan in the room. This is where our uh, Japanese magazines start here at the, the ceiling line. These are uh, Young Sundays on the right and the thicker ones on the left are Shonen, Shonen Sundays Zokans. Young Sunday is, of course, where One Pound Gospel was published in Japanese. That's why we have those issues. And now here are our Shonen Sundays. This is just a very small uh, collection of our larger collection. They're just simply too large, really, just to display all of them. We have, I would say this is, what, maybe a fourth of, of how many we own in total? Probably, yes. Getting these, we get these for color pages uh, that are not reprinted anywhere else. And, of course, if you want one color page, sometimes you have to buy a year's worth of the magazines uh, in order to get that. So we've gotten a a tremendous amount of these uh, that we store elsewhere in our house. Again, it's just too, they're they're just too large to show all of them. They used to be compared in size to telephone books, but I think that's probably an outdated comparison. The these are so large, though. These are from the 90s. That's Ranma one half. There's uh, Mermaid Saga. Uh, here we see some late 90s, uh, Ranma and Inuyasha. Again, most of the ones that we have displayed here have uh, color artwork from Takahashi. Uh, that's why we've placed these. This is the first issue with Inuyasha. Uh, this is the 40th anniversary issue. Now we transition into the 2000s here. Um, this is when Kyokai no Rine was beginning to be published. Here's the first issue of that, right next to the 50th anniversary issue. This is the most expensive thing in our collection, despite how it looks. We've shown this in one of our videos before, but it's one of Rumiko Takahashi's original doujinshi from her high school days. Yeah. So despite the condition it's in, it's it's worth many times more than anything else in this room. Yeah. These are big comic originals. This is where all of her current annual short stories are published. Uh, sort of sometimes known as her rumic theater stories that usually focus on Slice older, yeah, older salary men, slice of life stories. This shelf here is sort of a beginning of our reference section. 
Inuyasha quiz books, Ranma One Half video game guides, uh, various things that she's done illustrations for. Here's an Arusayatsura songbook, piano book. Yeah. We'll see some more piano books right over here as well. These have interviews with her, illustrations, um, photo shoots. Photo shoots. Most of these are from the 1980s and 1990s. There's a few. Uh, that's a new type. This is a uh, an anime. Uh, sorry, an Animedia magazine. It had a piece on one of the Urshetsura films or Ranma films. This is the uh, the Ranma one half piano book. This one's a, a somewhat obscure book. Uh, this. Urusayatsura piano book was quite obscure. I had only seen that once when I bought it. Uh, the Inuyasha one is a little bit easier to find. That's also a piano score in tablature book. Uh, was easy to find once upon a time. I don't yeah. know how easy it yeah. is to find now. Right. right. This is uh, an art book for the 2022 Urusayatsura anime, one of the newer art books as of the making of this video. Those are film uh, pamphlets that come out at the debut of the various Takashi films. These are, that we're pulling out here, movement and wheel issues. These are the official fan club magazines from the Kitty Animation Circle. So these were monthly little sort of pamphlet-sized magazines that have tons of behind-the-scenes articles about Kitty animation which was Rusayatsura, on one half, Meizane Koku, Yawara, Yawara F, uh, but obviously all of Takahashi's early stuff, which is what we were most interested in. These are Shonen Sunday graphics. These were uh, really detailed uh, publications, uh, a, a MOOC, like a magazine book, that had interviews with uh, Takahashi, with anime staff. Uh, these are Osaka University art books. Uh, Kazuo Koeki, Takahashi's mentor, was working with them publishing these. So she was featured in a number of these. One of the covers has Grappler Baki on it as well. Uh, just interviews with various manga artists. Takahashi appeared in a few of them that we've, that we've gotten. Uh, again, just panning over uh, some other magazines here. Now we're at the top again. These are Big Comic Spirits. This is originally where Maison Koku was published. Again, buy these for color chapters, uh, color pages rather, and end up with 100 or more, definitely over 100 issues of this. This is not all of them. Beside that, we have some of her shoujo manga, the magazines where she's been, shoujo manga issues that she's been interviewed in or has published in which is very rare and now we get into the heart of our actual sort of manga collection so this is the takahashi shelf the beginning of the the manga ursiatsura the numbers of volumes here these are the japanese volumes uh 34 tankoban the english editions were published in uh in, in larger format than that uh, those are the shinsoban the white spined books there uh, and then we have various movie books, uh, some of the Ursiatsura novelizations are there as well. Takahashi provided illustrations for those. Um, we buy the Japanese editions and the English editions uh, for help with translation issues, uh, questions for the site. That's the new art book that came, well new as of the making of this video in 2023, that came with the last box set uh, of the republic reissue. the reissues of the original tankoban uh those are the two all color books right here that's that's the art book and then those are the two all color books collected most of the full color illustrations here we have viz's finally completed run of rusayatsura uh, as i mentioned before this has just a really really difficult english language run started in 1989 finally finished it in 2023 it's been and that's the first time that's the first yeah, time it that's was first time the entire series has been published in english from beginning to end we were involved uh, our site rumic world was involved with uh, project ilm translating a lot of 
a lot of Rushatsura fan fan yeah, translation. Please. Yes, fan translation. Here's Meizanakoku, the Japanese Tonko Bonds. Originally, there are 15 of those. Here are the Bunko Bonds. These were a gift for Christmas one year. There's 10 of those. It's the same. Here are the Wide Bonds, which is just a nicer paper format. The Japanese Wide Bonds, which is what the English language run is based on. Next to those are... My first big. Yeah, my first big. They've got some color art, which I had to buy for that reason. Those are two of Viz's original graphic novels for Meizan Koku. I have those in the other room usually, but those ended up on the shelf in here. Those are the unfinished Soshuhin run of Meizan Koku. Uh, they didn't finish the series in Japan in that format. And then here's the here's the newest Viz run. Uh, they base it on the Wide Bond. The new run got a new translation. It's really nice. What did what did the Soshuhin books have in them? It was just a bigger format. Uh, they had a few color pages, but it was sporadic. And you bought all of them that were available. Yes, there's six available, but that's not all the series. It's about three fourths of the series, though. There's my Kyoko statue in her wedding kimono. And then down here we have Ranma one half. Um, again, 38 volumes. That's the Japanese numbering. That's the, the, the Tonkoban there in the background. When we get out of the Takahashi stuff, the numbers that we use are for the English editions. Uh, but for these, we're using the, the Japanese. Um, the ones with Ginma, the panda on them, those are from the Shinso Bonds. Those uh, those particular ones I bought because they had little cover art on the uh, back, color artwork on the back that I didn't have otherwise. But interior, there's no extra interviews or anything. And then here are the the Viz uh, blue versions. This is the original version. So this uh, I have I have these graphic novels as well. That's how Ranma was originally published. That's why the numbers are different. Thirty eight in Japan versus thirty six. Uh, the first graphic novel that red cover was a larger book and they've always stuck with the same numbering so that's what created the discrepancy uh this is this is the series that got us into to manga um back in 1993 uh, when we were in junior high this is my favorite series this will always be not just my sentimental favorite but i think forever my favorite um it's a series that i just always love revisiting again and again it's definitely what took us away from American comic books, which we had collected since we were, you know, little, little children before manga. Now, these aren't flipped either. I, I just could not justify rebuying this yet again for the new two-in-ones that are... Uh, these are flipped. I mean, yes, these are flipped. Uh, the the two-in-ones are properly Japanese-oriented. I just, you know, again, could not justify spending that. That's the Shikon Jewel in that little wooden box back there uh, behind Ginma. Those are also the uh, drama books. Those were published. They're just manga chapters, but were published when the live-action drama came out, those red books. On this shelf, we have Inuyasha, which was, at the time, sort of a departure for Takahashi. This was her first mostly non-comedy series. And we have all the Japanese Tonkoban in front, and then all of the original Viz graphic novel editions uh, here. Again, this had a different run at first, but we were buying it in single American-style comic book issues, so we didn't buy those at the time, and then re recollected it in this format just for ease of, of reading and access. Yeah, early on when the with the comic books, we I think we were initially unsure if we would go back and buy the graphic novels because we had those loose comic books. Um, ultimately, we did though. One of the things that Viz used to market Inuyasha when it first began was that it was getting a simultaneous release. Right. But you can imagine in 1997 what a simultaneous release looked like with English in Japan. I'm sure it was. A few months off, but it was a very quick license and pickup. With the comic books, two chapters a month versus uh, in Japan, four chapters a month. So it, it really fell behind quickly. Here's Kyokai no Rine. 
and then you have her Rumic World short stories in Japanese, Mermaid Saga, and then the Rumic Theater, quote unquote Rumic Theater uh, collections, Takahashi Gekijo from the big comic original that we showed earlier. These are the collected editions of those. A lot of these have not been collected into English, unfortunately. Sunday Manga College, that's the green books that you see sort of sunken down there. Those uh, are Shonen Sunday artists from the 1980s, 1982 is when they started publishing those. It's sort of a how-to-draw manga sort of book. And then those two wide bonds there are collected versions, just a new format of the for, world. Yes, for, for these, these books here. Um, so they're the, the same material, just in a larger paper, uh, better paper quality. These were published for the li when the live action short stories were being done on television. It's just again another collection. Here we have Kyokai no Rine, or Rine as it's known more commonly in English. This is sort of Takahashi's Dark Horse series, I would say. Her, I guess, least popular would be one way of putting it. Uh, it's if you haven't read it, if you have overlooked it, I highly recommend it it's really funny it's a return to comedy after over a decade of Inuyasha's drama the, the fonts that Viz used for the ch chapter titles I always thought they looked a little simplistic a little cheap uh, the, the interior looks great of course uh, and the sound effects and everything I just I don't know why they use such a simple font for the chapter titles they don't do that for her other books I don't know that's came the mirror this is uh Surprisingly, they finally started publishing more of her short stories again fairly recently. This uh, was 2014 in uh, Japan, more recently here in the U.S. This is uh, The Gentle World of Rumiko Takahashi, uh, interviews with Kazumasa Hirai uh, of Ape Man and Wolf Guy fame. These Rene books, these are scripts uh, from the anime, and then these are the mermaid uh, novelizations. Takahashi did new illustrations in, in those and they are written by Tomoko Komparu who is a script writer on many Takahashi anime going back to Arusi Atsura she and Takahashi struck up a friendship she did these original novels here that we're pulling out and because they were friends Takahashi did the covers and interior illustrations for all of those it's a detective series and then that's another wolf guy book there Takahashi did illustrations for those on this bottom shelf here, we have the Mao up to what is current in Japanese and English, the Tankoban in the back, and the English Viz versions up front. And next to that, we have Yashahime, which is being published as we're doing this video. The Tankoban's in the back, and the Viz editions in the front. The first three books there are the original One Pound Gospel releases and the really hard to find fourth volume in English. There was such a large gap between when they were published. Um, that's why there was never, the fourth volume was never released when Viz was doing those old format books. These are the original short stories. These have not been republished by Viz since the 1990s when they came out. Um, it'd be great if they would do a new release of those. Viz has a ton of Takahashi short stories that they are sitting on that they could easily release to the market. At least like six volumes, more maybe than that off the top of my head. These are art books. These are all Takahashi art books, uh, English and Japanese, mostly Japanese. Um, quite a few of her books have been, art books have been translated into English, but certainly not the majority of them. Uh, these are the Ranma Memorial books, various Inuyasha books. This is the Rumik uh, World 35th Anniversary book. Uh, that's a really great one. That's increasingly rare these days. It's getting pretty pricey, uh, but a wonderful collection. Next to that, we have some... They look like records. These are CDs, though, but we wanted to buy them in the oversized format for some of the extras that come with that. From Yashahime. From Yashahime. This is, these are portfolio collections. There's one for Maison Koku, and there is one for Maison Koku next to it. Rusei Atsura, sorry, and then Maison Koku is next to it. 
And then we go up top again. These are the original pieces of artwork by Rumiko Takahashi uh, and uh, Yuji Moriyama, the director of the Maison Ikoku, uh film that we've just managed to collect over the years. The character designer, yes. Here's Blackjack. Uh, this is starting a lot of Osamu Tezuka manga that you'll be seeing here. Blackjack is my favorite of Tezuka's work. I was over the moon when they started bringing it out in English. Viz had attempted to bring it out, and those are on the shelf here in a second, you'll see. But Vertical finally did a print run of it, and I own all of that. It's really hard to find now. Some ver from various volumes of it are. Uh, Book of Human Insects is a short story collection that's really good, fairly dark. Ludwig B. This is Tezuka's biography of Beethoven. He died when he was. This was one of the, yeah. The, this was one of the three series that he was working on. If you can imagine working on three series at once when Tezuka passed away in Japan, so it's unfinished. But they brought out everything that was available. Alabaster is one of his seinen works, one of his more grown-up titles. There's two volumes of that. I have both of those. Under the Air is next to that, which is more short stories, along with Storm Fairy, which is more short stories. And again, the, the volume numbers that we're putting here, these are, for the English editions, uh, the publications are the publications these originally appeared in in magazine format just for those that are curious and then the the year dates are when they came out in japan not when they came out in the united states here we have some of his shorter work from early in his career age of adventure uh next world metropolis lost world those were all dark horse except age of adventure which i think was a foreign publisher that released it in english here's bomba which, as of 2023, is the newest release that Tezuka's gotten in English. Here's the two-volume version of Princess Night, which is shoujo and a forerunner to a lot of shoujo. Sort of the grandfather of a lot of shoujo works. Next to that is Adam Cat, which is a parody of Astro Boy that Tezuka did. It's a cute little series. It's just one volume. Beside that is one of my favorites of Tezuka's Barbara. It's dark. It's adult. Adult in theme, not necessarily in content. It's really good. Clockwork Apple is more short stories. And then up there next to Clockwork Apple were Viz's releases. There's Wonder 3, which I'm really glad got a translation in English, although... As far as Tezuka goes, it's not my favorite. It was a little too silly for my taste. I was going to ask you that. Why Why did you say that? You've, you've mentioned that a few times to me. The protagonist is not very interesting, but the three alien leads are good. I just kind of wish the kid wasn't around as much, but it's fine. Uh, Message to Adolf is sort of his fictionalized retelling of the life of Hitler along with two other characters named Adolf. It's excellent. Viz originally published it and then it got republished later and I was able to buy it then. Going left we see Twin Knights, a sequel to Princess Knight. It's one volume. And beside that see here we've got crime and punishment Tezuka's much abridged adaptation of the literary classic beside that is a fun one volume series about a boy and a tiger brave Don Dororo is something that a lot of people in the English language market have gotten into. It's Takahashi's favorite Tezuka work. Ode to Kirihito, that's the all-in-one, the big thick one, and then that's the second volume next to it, but it's it, you can get that in one volume. 
uh, Mysterious Underground Men is a really, really, really early Tezuka work. Buddha is a great work of Tezuka's, The Life of the Buddha. I ended up with two copies of Captain Ken. It's a two-volume series. And then another one of his Shonen Adventure series, Triton of the Sea. It's two volumes in English. Record of the Glass Castle is more short stories. Unico is a character that he created for Sanrio, the Japanese company. Uh, that's a full color manga. It's really good. I was surprised at how kind of mature it was. And there's a new anime for that. Is that right now, recently? I think so. Crater is not short stories, but it's sort of all one volume thing. Apollo Song is an adult, not hentai, but adult, thematically adult work. Um, it's really good. If you like Barbara, I would recommend Apollo Song. Swallowing the Earth is another really good one. And next to that is by far what I think is Tezuka's hardest work to read. It is rough. It is very depressing. Ayako. It's good, though. Here's Phoenix. Uh, I finally managed to get all of Phoenix. It's probably his hardest to collect. At least it was for me because I didn't get it all when it originally came out. I'm showing Buddha again here. Uh, when I finally decided that I wanted to collect all of Tezuka's work in English, I needed to decide, okay, what am I going to collect first, Buddha or Phoenix? Because I didn't have either one of those series. And I made a mistake and started getting Buddha first. Buddha is much easier to find in English at incredibly reasonable prices. Phoenix is very hard to, very, very, very hard to collect in English. It's incredibly expensive. And this volume here which was the last volume I needed, is the single most expensive English language book I've, I've purchased. I would be embarrassed to say how much I paid for this. And, and what would you say is the kind of the overall story of Phoenix? Phoenix is these, it's, it's his life's work. It's something that he would start and stop and revisit over the decades. Uh, it's about rebirth, reincarnation. So it's a lot of kind of disparate stories that are tied together by this resurrecting Phoenix entity. Here's Astro Boy, Dark Horse's original run of that. These are a lot of fun, and it only gets better as it goes along. The early stuff with Astro Boy is, you know, kind of childish, and then by the end, it's, it's really, really good. It's really firing on all cylinders. That's Dust 8. That wasn't released in English by an English, it's, it is released in English, but not by an English language publisher. I was really lucky to find that on eBay. It's an Indonesian publisher, but it is in English. Uh, Melody of Iron, more short stories. MW or Moo is sort of a biological weapon, war story, mystery. And a lot of these came through... Um, Kickstarters, right? Yeah, a lot of the DMP manga. So is it is it difficult to find out when something's coming out? What's what's coming? Yeah, I would with I, I would say there's the thief anyway. Akatsuka. More short stories. So you have you have everything by Tezuka. I do in I English. Finally, do just only recently was able to complete my English Tezuka collection. So here we have Akira. Uh, these were the Dark Horse editions. I think Kodansha has reclaimed their publication rights these days. Um, a great series. Really, if you've only seen the anime, the manga fleshes out a lot from the film. Uh, and then we move into our Ryoichi Ikigami. We have everything in English of Ikigami. He was, he was a very iconic figure in the 90s in English. This was published in Pulp. Pulp, yes. Which we in that, showed that, that magazine we showed earlier. Crying Freeman. This was another early Viz manga. This is the Dark Horse edition. They republished it eventually. Uh, fantastic artist. He is Takahashi's favorite manga artist. Um, an incredibly influential 
uh, very sort of uh, naturalistic style, uh, very sort of gekiga, very sort of seinen, uh, very sexually charged stories, very action-oriented. Uh, Wounded Man, uh, another great one. These are from Comics One, and not a publisher that's still around. Yeah, Comics One didn't last too long in English, but they were trying to do a weekly... They weren't trying. They did do it for a while, a weekly, thick publication uh, emulating a, a Japanese weekly. Here's Wounded Man. This ran in Big Comic Spirits alongside Maison Koku. You can tell sort of just by looking at some of the pages that we show here how different the series were that would run alongside one another in Big Comic Spirits. This is a hallmark with all of Ikigami stuff. Lots of nudity, lots of sex, lots of violence. Samurai Crusader, this was in Shonen Sunday. This was running around the same time as Ranma, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, a short series, Viz published all of that. My the Psychic Girl, this was running uh, during Urshiatsuro's era, another Shonen Sunday series. Uh, one that we always remember from our early days in the of collecting manga that Viz advertised. Sanctuary is probably one of my favorites of, of Ikigami. So this is a political thriller. This is from Viz. They have not republished this since the 1990s, unfortunately. It's a great, great, great series. Um, uh, Ikigami's work was so essential to launching manga in America because of his style. Uh, they wanted something, Viz has often talked about in early interviews, the, the editors wanted something that was... Uh, that looks more American in comic book style, stylized but less stylized than sort of traditional manga, and his his artwork really fit that mold. Um, in, an incredible draftsman, uh, incredible layouts. Just uh, he he often talks about in interviews wanting to capture the beauty of uh, Japanese people. Um, just incredible sort of artist. And we have everything of his in English, which is unfortunately just a small fraction of his overall production. This shelf is uh, sort of knickknacks, uh, video games, Takashi video games from Japan, Famicom, Super Famicom. Uh, that's a Maison Koku computer game. Um, VHS tapes of things like the making of Urshiatsura Movie 4 and fan events from Japan. Uh, this is the Boys and Girls Complete Competitive Collection of SF Manga. This is, uh, Takahashi published a little bit in this. A lot of the new wave manga artists in the early 1980s were publishing in this. This was kind of a C-rank magazine uh, where a lot of uh, young artists in the 80s kind of got their start before moving to places like Big Comic Spirits. Tribute to Toy. This is a series that I wish would get translated. This was a Shonen Sunday series toy uh, by Atsushi Kamijo. Really incredible artwork, very much kind of like Patrick Nagel, uh, I would say. Hasn't been translated. Here's an issue of Garo. The issue that we actually own is the first issue that Takahashi picked up in a doctor's office and was introduced to the works of Ryoichi Ikigami. And so I wanted that issue simply because it was so influential in her life and her career. Pulled off the shelf was a new uh, art book we've got by Momoko Sakura of her legendary manga and anime series. Chibi Maruko-chan. Uh, Takahashi did an illustration in it. These are manga bon. Uh These are single volume. Shogakukan is pushing, putting these out still um, since 2017 focusing on sort of the entire body of work of various manga artists. The one I we have on the screen there is Takahashi's volume. Really good. They, it helps us to sort of discover artists that we're tangentially familiar with. Mostly focuses on Shogakukan artists, but not exclusively. A lot of the books have guest artists in them, so Takahashi will do drawings for other artists. Here are Stranger Sorrento. This is another magazine that Kazuo Koeki, Takahashi's teacher, put out. Uh, each issue has a small interview with her in it, and so we're trying to track those down. Here's a recent, as of 2023, Inuyasha art book. It's all of the settings and document collection for the anime. And then these are just art books, just sundry art books. An America, issues of An America magazine. Um, Intron Depot, that's Masamune Shiro's art book uh, from the 90s. Uh, next to that is Please Save My Earth art book. I'll talk more about Please Save My Earth. A lot of SNK, uh, the video game publisher, art books, MOOCs, 
um, on King of Fighters, Fatal Fury, that sort of thing. Uh, Blackjack, uh, Art of uh, Mana, that's the Square Enix game series. Uh, Gravity Days, art book. Uh, Akira Toriyama's Dragon Quest stuff. Tetsuya Chiba uh, next to that. Uh, Daijiro Morohoshi, I see one of his books there as well. Those are some, uh, those shorter books, those are some Japanese tabloid magazines for the piece I was doing on Takahashi's lawsuit. Uh, you can watch that video on our channel. There's some Shonen, Shonen Champion issues. Takahashi's never published in Shonen Champion, but she has done tribute art in those three issues. Grappler Baki is what's... And uh, the baseball manga. Whose name Do uh, Dokubin. Dokubin, yeah. yeah. That's a Doraemon big thing she did some artwork for her. These are just sort of uh, random books. Those in the back are some uh, Shonen Jumps. Those were given to us by our father, an art teacher. His One of his students, an exchange student from Japan when we were little. We were probably in elementary school. 1994, I think, is yeah the date on those. We would have been uh, 12 or 13. <clears throat> uh, those were some of the earliest manga we had, even before Ranma, I guess. Around that time. Uh, Gegege no Kitaro book. Uh, Takahashi wrote a piece that we've translated on the site. You can find the translation of that. Um, Utsurundes uh, by Sinchi Yoshida. Again, Takahashi did a piece for that. Yeah, basically these are all books that have one page of something by Rumiko Takahashi. And so we kind of had to buy it to get the one page. Those are Kyoka Asuka books there in the back. Um, again, we've done a video on him on the channel. A Tezuka art Azuma, book. Azuma, Hideo Azuma. Hideo Azuma, thank you, yeah. Now we're at the top of the center wall. Uh, this is A Drifting Life. I just reread this again. Uh, a great manga about the origins of Gekiga manga and the Osaka manga scene. Uh, it deals with Takao Saito, the creator of Golgo, and, and other artists that came out of Osaka. And speaking of that, we have a member of that sort of group of artists, Shotaro Ishinomori here. This is his Common Rider series. And next to that is Super Sentai Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger. Uh, these are both sort of early Togosatsu inspiring series. Beside that, a series I really enjoyed, King Yoyu's books. This was released by Viz in the United States. They didn't, unfortunately, put out the entire run of the manga. They did four of the 19 volumes. It's really good, though. It's entertaining. It's also educational. They talk about real manga works in this and sort of give a history of different series and talk about their influence on other artists other manga that come later so it's a really good interesting history lesson next to that we have skull facebook seller honda san uh i was kind of hoping that this would be kind of like kingo used books and you you didn't like it as much i didn't like it as much no it's kind of a one note series and that's uh, not the whole series that is the whole oh, series. that is yeah, four, okay. four volumes that's the entire series then we have oh my goddess kind of the flagship of dark horses manga titles for a long time i've collected this on and off as you can see i don't have all of it uh, i do hope to one day complete my set of that i like uh fujishima's artwork a lot we have a few early volumes of yotsuba and here I think everybody loves Yotsuba. It's just another series I haven't had enough time to invest in. Next to that is uh, Cheeky Angel. This was running in Shonen Sunday around the same time as Inuyasha. Uh, I remember reading this when I was living in Japan in Shonen Sunday. Uh, it's the only Nishi, uh, Nishimori series that's ever been brought out here. Uh, Gundam Seed, we just have one volume of this. This was a Christmas gift, I think. Uh, and then Cromarty High School, inspired by the works of Ikigami sort of a, a gag series. Uh, we don't have most of that, just sampled that. All My Darling Daughters, this is a, a, a great book. I just picked up at the bookstore, uh, having le leafed through it and really enjoyed it. This is Jose, isn't it? Yeah, Jose, a Jose series. Um, really good short stories. Beck, uh, another one that was a gift. Uh, we only have the, the one volume um, and didn't pick up anymore. I don't think Tokyo Pop finished this in the United States, but oh, I, could be, I could be wrong. Here's just a random viz sampler series and this is a japanese edition of devil man lady i bought this uh, from outside of a sutaya in hirakatashi when i was living in japan and just a good memory uh, and a good manga series uh, final fantasy type zero uh, i picked up some final fantasy manga when uh, 
they started to, to publish those here in the U.S. Um, these are all interrelated to type zero. Um, and then next to that, we begin uh, Junji Ito series. Here's one of his more recent collections, uh, Dissolving Classroom. Viz didn't put that one out. And then the other series that Viz didn't have the license to, which is more of a humorous uh, cat diary of his daily life. And then we start Viz's sort of ongoing sort of random short story collections. Here's Tomie, which is probably one of his best known works, his most iconic character. Uh, and then we have just various sets of short stories here. Uh, after Tomie, there's Frankenstein, which is a multi-chapter storyline of his adaptation of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and then I think it has a short story or two in it as well. After that, there's Shiver. And these are short stories that are not chronologically ordered, is that right? No, they're not. They're kind of interspersed, smashed. Uh, no Longer Human, I really, 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 really recommend. It's his adaptation of Osamu Dazai's uh, novel. It's really kind of bleak. Joe that we saw there, that seemed like that was maybe the series that really helped him. That was the that second, was the second series. thing that was released in English after Uzumaki and Venus in the Blind Spot. That is a standalone. No, Venus in the Blind Spot is not, but Rimina, Hellstar Rimina, is a standalone story. It's not short stories. Censor is, I think, his newest as of 2023 when we're recording this. I think that's his newest in Japan as well. And then Love Sickness and Deserter. More short stories er, from earlier in his career. Black Paradox is a fairly new short stories. Liminal Zone. I think this might actually be his newest one in Japan. I think I made a mistake. I thought it was Censor. Uzumaki, this is what was published in Pulp Magazine here in the 90s. Uh, that's what really launched him in the United States. There was a kind of a gap of him catching on, though. And then we go into Go Nagai, Cutie Honey, and Devil Man. Uh, Cutie Honey's really funny, really fun. Devil Man is super dark. Doing Time, this is a, a great uh, sort of seinen uh, manga about, uh, it's an autobiographical story about the mangaka uh, being sent to prison. Uh, he was sent to prison, if I remember correctly, for modifying a, a toy gun into a, a working firearm. Um, and, and he details sort of daily life in jail. Uh, for those of you that have looked at our uh, My Lum series, he did uh, one of the illustrations of Lum in his unique uh, sort of style. Uh, yeah, it's a really interesting series if you'd like to learn about the Japanese prison system. Beside that, we have Tropic of the Sea, which is a manga by Satoshi Kon, the very famous anime director. You can see sort of Katsuhiro Otomo's influence in his art style. It's good. Obviously, he's much more well-known for his anime than his manga. What's Michael is next to that. This is a early sort of standalone volume of It!, that Dark Horse put out. And then uh, Hirohiko Araki, the creator of JoJo, uh, his book on manga theory and practice. Uh, just an interesting book sort of on his thoughts on the creation of manga. Next we have The Poe Clan by Moto Hagio. This Hagio uh, is excellent. It's a lot of a lot of interesting themes in this. The artwork is gorgeous. If anybody's sort of afraid of uh, shoujo manga, I would recommend Hagio as a great artist to start with. Otherworld Barbara is another Hagio series. I am in the midst of reading this right now. I think I like it even more than Poe Clan, though. It's really interesting. And it's got some themes, if anybody's interested in Please Save My Earth. It's kind of reminiscent of that in some ways. Next is Dark Horse's uh, short story collection. A uh, scary book of Kazuo Mezu's works. I don't. This is not all of his short stories, but they got three volumes out in English before they ended that. Drifting Classroom is easily, I would say, his most iconic horror series. Uh, this is the original uh, Viz release. I think they've republished it recently in 
more condensed volumes, but we picked it up. We were really excited when they started publishing his work. If you've never read any horror manga and you want to be really upset by something, I recommend Drifting Classroom. Uh, Rochi is another Umezu series. This one is, they're sort of interconnected short stories. Uh, Orochi is sort of a narrator character. It's sort of not straight up horror, sort of suspense. Uh, I, I enjoyed it though, and that's the complete run, one through four. Biz just completed it. Reptilia is Snake Girl, I believe, in Japan, and it is one long story, and I think one or two short stories in that, also by Kazuo Meizu. And that is a sort of shoujo horror. Beside that, we have the two volumes that Viz released of Cat-Eyed Boy. That is the entire series of it. If I remember correctly, Cat-Eyed Boy was in Shonen Sunday. Uh, no, Shonen King. And, and Shonen Sunday. Sunday. Beside that, we have The Summit of the Gods. It's a mountain climbing manga that was released by a French company. It's in English, though. This is the entire series for it. It recently got an anime on Netflix that was really well-received a movie. Jiro Taniguchi is a, a great artist. I think he's maybe more popular in Europe. He's had a few things. Uh, we own quite a few of his English releases, but he's uh, difficult to find. Uh, there's not really one consistent publisher uh, in America that puts out his work. He was one of the early artists, though, in America, manga artists. And here's Legend Zelda, Link to the Past. This was originally published in Nintendo Power, and chronologically, it's probably the first manga that we encountered before we really knew what manga was as children. Uh, and it just so happened that it ends up being Shotaro Ishinomori, who's one of our favorites, uh, one of my favorites at least later in life. Panorama Island by Suihiro Maruo. Gorgeous artwork, really sort of disturbing, horrific visuals. Very Taisho era, sort of influenced, 1920s. Here's Cyborg 009, another Shotari Ishinomori series. Uh, definitely our favorite of his works. The early 2000s anime. Are you missing a volume? Yeah, I'm missing two. I don't have nine and ten, which are the most expensive of that series. Drops of God. Unfortunately, this was unfinished in print form in English. Uh, there's five volumes, but last year or two years ago, they released all of it digitally translated. So I do need to invest in that and finish that off. It's really good. It's really... It's about wine? Yeah, it's a serious sort of food and wine manga. I really liked it. How does it compare to Oishinbo, which we'll see? It's a bit more serious where Oishinbo is kind of playful. I like Oishinbo more. But yes, I do definitely recommend it. And I think that's when we started to become aware of digital only releases, maybe replacing things. Yeah. Here's uh, Tonomonogatari by Shigeru Mizuki. This is his most recent release in English as of this recording. Uh, it's some of the last work he was doing in big comic, sort of autobiographical. Here's the first Kitaro release, uh, Gegege no Kitaro. If you know any of Mizuki's works, this is probably what you know. I highly recommend it. His art's gorgeous in this. It's filled with yokai, different kinds of yokai than you might be used to from Inuyasha, though. Onward Towards Our Noble Deaths is an autobiographical story of his time in World War II, Mizuki's. And then there's Nononba, which is more of his life story, this time from his childhood and his relationship with an older woman in his neighborhood who he sort of treats as like a grandmother. Beside that, we have Shigeru Mizuki's Hitler. This is his autobiography of Adolf Hitler. It's more of a straightforward biography, I should say. That's more of a straightforward biography than Tezuka's work. 
So Mizuki, uh, the Showa books um, deal with his time in the the war in the Pacific theater of World War II. Uh, our granddad fought in, uh, he was a pilot in stationed in Burma, so it's interesting for us to read about the war from the Japanese perspective. Mizuki had a brutal experience. He lost his arm, um, and he, he details sort of the abuse that he encountered at the hands of his uh, his seniors in the military. It's not just the war, though. It, it's everything that leads up to that in the Showa era and then the rebuilding of Japan and sort of how modern-day Japan came to exist as we know it today, as well as his getting into manga and creating manga and sort of his struggles with poverty and marriage and things. I highly recommend it. It's yeah, it's a, a, it's a great series. Really, really good series. Here's more of Kitaro. This isn't the rest of the Japanese edition, but this might be the entire original Kitaro run if you add it to the first volume that was released that we already showed you. Quest for the Missing Girl. This is another Jiro Taniguchi standalone novel. Kind of a hard-boiled detective story. Here's Adventure Kid <laughs> by one of the most well-known hentai authors uh i haven't read this yet but at least it does have some merit to it other than subject matter black blizzard uh, another sort of early gekiga series uh, we've we're really interested in in gekiga work um and this is a, a classic from the 1950s uh, that we picked up uh, a, a fun sort of dark tale Next to this, Ghost in the Shell, this is probably the first manga other than a Takahashi manga that I bought. This is the original Dark Horse. Uh, this is before the film came out, the anime film. Uh, I was really into uh, Masamune Shiro's work at the time and uh, was really excited. Uh, I have the individual comic books as well, like we showed early. Dominion, this was, this was actually the series, though, that I was introduced to Shiro through. Uh, Dominion Tank Police, as the anime is called. Uh, there's another series, No More Noise. Again, I have that in comic book form. I don't have that as a, a, a sort of a graphic novel collection. Dark Horse used to put out uh, a lot of Shiro's work. Um, and then Hotel Harborview. This is an early Viz. This is one of the first things Viz ever put out. This is, again, Jiro Taniguchi, who we saw the mountain climbing and the missing girl manga just a moment ago. Um, this would have been when Urusei Atsuro was first coming out. Uh, this is would have been released alongside of some early uh, Ryoichi Gigami pieces by Viz is probably like released in the late 1980s. Uh, again, this is just something that we used to see at comic book shops when we were buying, you know, X-Men and Marvel comics uh, and then picked up much later. Uh, he's just has really great art. Uh, Zoo in Winter. This is another Taniguchi series. Uh, well, not series. It's a standalone book. It's much more sort of easygoing slice of life than his hard-boiled action stuff. Walking Man is similar. It's sort of a slice of life, everyday thing. This is an early Gekiga author, Tadao Suge. I just finished reading this. You can see the bookmark is still in it. Some of the stories are hit and miss. They're sort of nonsensical, but there's many more hits I would say than misses I overall did enjoy this series Heartbroken Angels this is a four panel gag uh, series from Pulp uh, that we really enjoyed in Pulp a lot of dirty jokes a lot of sort of uh, dark humor as well really funny uh, pieces from Pulp magazine Town of Pigs this is another horror manga if you like Kazuo Omezu I, I don't know if Hino is quite up to that level, but it, it was fine. It was good. Claudine, this is a shoujo series by shoujo volume by Ryoko Ikeda. I really like Ikeda for the next series that we're going to see, but this is one of the other works that's available of hers in English, so I wanted to pick it up as well. Not the next series, but uh, this is Little Leo. This is Moto Hagio, who we saw earlier with Poe Clan, uh, her sort of short collection of stories about Leo, the cat who wants to go to school and date, uh, and his sort of sad struggles trying to become, trying to interact with the human world. 
um, it, great artwork. Uh, she's a, a famous cat lover as well, and so poor Leo doesn't understand like the bell system at school, doesn't understand you know how to use human bathrooms, and people sort of mock and laugh at him for going outside like a cat normally would. After that, we have Udon's excellent release of Rosa Versailles in five volumes. This has become already pretty expensive. Uh, I'm really glad that I got this. If you like Revolutionary Girl Utena, you'll see a lot of sort of references from it in Rosa Versailles. This is a really, really, really influential shoujo story. And they collected like all of the advertising and all of the color work. Is that right? Yeah, Udon did a spectacular job with this release. Hardbacks, full color, all the magazine covers. It's really fantastic. The story's great. I highly enjoy it. If Again, like I said, if there's something that ever turned you off about shoujo manga, I think you should read this one, and I think it would definitely change some minds. Shoujo is not scary. Disappearance Diary, this is by Hideo Azuma. This is a great manga. This is one that I love to go back and reread. This is his autobiographical story of his alcoholism and his homelessness uh, despite his his fame in the 1980s. He's uh, the sort of father, the founder of Lolicon. It sounds depressing, but it isn't. No, it's 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 very funny. His art style is, is really cheerful uh, despite the sort of dark themes. Um, here we can see him sort of living on the street. This is, again, after he had become a, a noted and uh, successful manga artist, just the stress of deadlines and married life. He just walked away from his life. He became a gas pipe fitter for a while um, and lived in, you know, in parks, uh, wound up making a mascot character for the gas company that he was working for. That, and he used a different name. They didn't realize that he was a, you know, celebrity, essentially. Uh, and then it deals with him sort of going to rehab and trying to recover uh, from his alcoholism. He's passed away now, but it's really, it's one of the only things in English, though, uh, there. Uh, unfortunately from him there should be more much more and after that we have Space Battleship Yamato by Leiji Matsumoto uh, I love Matsumoto's Harlock character and this is a comicalization I think is the term so it's an adaptation of the anime if you have no prior knowledge of Yamato this is probably not the place to start. You'd probably want to watch the anime first because it sort of alludes to things in the anime without necessarily showing them. What is not a comicalization, though, is Queen Emeraldus. This is a straight-up manga story that you can read as an introduction to the character of Emeraldus. Um, I think I probably ended up enjoying this even more than Captain Harlock, which you see here. But those are two characters that are definitely intertwined. And these are the entire Emeraldus and Harlock series in English. Uh, they did finish those off. For such iconic characters, it's shocking that the series end up being so short. And we first sort of read his work in Anne America. They published Galaxy Express 3.9. Yeah. Here's Tombs. Uh, we ran out of room in the Junji Ito section. And it's there for right now on our next shelf we can see Yakitate Japan this was a Shonen Sunday series that was running alongside Inuyasha I think that's how kind of how we were introduced to it if you like Food Wars you would really like Yakitate Japan it's weirder it's funnier it's really it's, it's pretty absurdist what you say yeah it's really zany and off the wall uh Everything's sort of based in food, but... And its anime was released in the U.S.? Yeah. Yeah. And it did get its entire run finished here. Cross Game, the longest Mitsuru Adachi series released in the United States. Again, this was from Shonen Sunday. This was released alongside Inuyasha. Uh, I can't recommend Mitsuru Adachi enough. If you have never read any of his works, please do yourself a favor. If you want a shorter introduction to his series... They are two short story collections, short program one and two that Viz put out. You can see those there. And then Pat Labor, Viz only collected two volumes of this, unfortunately. I just have uh, volume two. Um, 
another fan favorite, Zatch Bell. This was incomplete in English. It ended when the lawsuit that we've chronicled on our website happened in Japan. As soon as that was settled and as soon as the series ended in Japan, I guess the big wigs at Shogakukan said end it in the United States no matter where it is. Something like 10 more volumes, I think, were left unpublished. Yeah, probably slightly less than 10. But it was successful here. Yeah, I mean, it was it's, popular. Yeah, it's really popular here. Still is popular here. I think it'll probably get re-released at some point. And he's doing a sequel now in Japan, isn't he? Yeah, that's why I think it'll get re-released. Somebody's got to pick this up and finish it. Death Note, uh, you know, probably needs no introduction. Uh, incredibly popular series. Uh, I was picking this up when I was in graduate school. Uh, it was just giving me something uh, to read between uh, studying uh, so good memories associated with that time uh, when I was finishing up my college education. Uh, we don't own a lot of Shonen Jump series, ironically. Yeah, it's weird when you kind of point that out and realize it as well. Yeah, this is one of the. There's one other one that we'll see here in a little bit uh, that is that is a Jump series that that I really enjoyed. But uh, yeah, despite their kind of worldwide popularity and. Uh, we read some of them digitally uh, on uh, through Viz's app, but um, I guess none have moved us quite to put them in the collection. Azumanga Daio, this is uh, from the same creator as Yotsuba, and uh, again, it was a, an omnibus collection, uh, mostly four-panel work for this particular series, a very cute series. Then we move down, and uh, Gantz by Hiroya Oku. Oku was someone that I was reading when I was in Japan. Uh, I had uh, picked up his Japanese, uh, a Japanese edition of his short story, Hin, and really enjoyed his art and really kind of enjoyed his offbeat style. His artwork has changed a lot, though, since then. He uses a lot of digital sort of modeling to supplement his, his hand-drawn pieces. Um, Gantz, I really enjoyed. And he's a fan of Rumiko Takahashi. Yeah, he, he is. He's a he's a fan of Takahashi's work as well, which is quite interesting because some of his work is pretty different. Um, but he did some, you know, gender swapping stuff in his short stories, uh, Hin. And so I have the, the whole series of Gantz. I had wanted to get some of his other pieces that have, have been brought out since then. But again, just space, just kind of taking into consideration, you know, shelf space. Kaon, uh, this is the uh, manga series that launched the very popular anime. Uh, these are four panel stories, mostly. Uh, this is the whole collection there, uh, dealing with their uh, time in school and then college life uh, in the last one. And so, yeah, just a popular series and picked that up. And then, let's see, I think we're going to shift back down here to the left one of my all-time favorite series this is please save my earth i was thrilled when they finally released this i had been waiting for this series to be uh published in english i bought bought it as it was coming out uh, i own a number of the, the original japanese volumes this was the first thing i ever made a website for before rumic world uh, our, my old GeoCities page for please save my earth uh, from what i understand it's hard to find now a the, the the set uh it was something that i snapped up uh saki hiratari's artwork is just uh, my favorite uh just really an incredible series very sort of complex dealing with reincarnation and science fiction elements uh the ova has not been republished that series unfortunately i have, have it on vhs and then the original dvd release uh, again, this was one of the, the early series that we picked up. We used to see it advertised all the time on our Ranma VHS tapes. Um, hopefully, I always hope that they'll release some more of her work. I think only one of her other series has been released in English, not from Viz. Yeah, CMX did one before they went out of business. And there's other, there's she's made sort of semi-sequels to Please Save My Earth and sort of spinoffs as well. None of, none of that has been published. Probably, I guess, won't be published in the U.S., uh, but I'm, I'm always surprised that they haven't recollected or, or republished Please of My Earth. Emma, this is by Kaoru Mori, uh, probably has become more well-known for her bride story manga, I think. These were from DC Comics, kind of short-lived CMX, is that what it was yeah. called? Yeah. Uh, they briefly were in the manga publishing industry. 
this is a series that I bought the first volume of, and then I, I thought I had bought more of it. It was I had stored these in a drawer, and then I when I went back to sort of revisit it, I realized I had not bought as much of it as I thought I had. So I had to go back and sort of recollect uh, the rest of it, which was a little tricky in the original editions. You can see some of these are like library editions. This is Shirley. This is a one volume, also a maid story, also by Kaoru Mori. I like this one a lot. It's uh, more Edwardian, so more, I guess, Downton Abbey sort of setting uh, time period than Emma, which is sort of late 1800s Victorian. Um, just a really sort of precious character. This one's a little bit less romance focused and more sort of the daily life and daily responsibilities of a maid. And then her uh, short story book, Kaori Mori, Anything and Something. Uh, again, just, uh, sort of a, a smattering of different stories by Mori. Really great, uh, a really great mangaka. I'm glad to see a lot of her work is being brought out here. And then next to that, we have Revolutionary Girl Utena by Viz. This is the entire series of it and you can see that it was coming out when Viz made their transition from one format to the other so the last volume there is in the newer smaller format that manga is published in this is the first shoujo manga I purchased uh, I love Utena as a character I love the storyline the manga is uh, not too different from the anime but it does kind of have a different feel to it is it a comicalization or is it more of a it's more of just its own thing I would say then we just have a, an empty shelf down here and we had a little stand I said that this will be our our uh, pick of the week maybe or something that we can <laughs> I don't know uh, then we are going to move up to the next shelf and this is uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure again probably needs no introduction um, I've fallen behind on, on getting these again it's such a large lengthy series I'm um, still kind of trying to figure out if I'm going to continue to purchase everything uh, because it's qu quite a commitment. A, a great series, though, multi-generational sort of family tree series uh, dealing with the branches and offshoots of the Joestar family. And then next to that is the first volume uh, of uh, Thus Spoke Rohan Kishibe, also by uh, Hirohiko, uh, Hirohiko Araki. Uh, again, he's you know needs no introduction. Uh, incredibly popular at the moment. And then we have the massive, iconic series Case Closed, aka Detective Conan. This is probably one of the longer series that's being released in English. One Piece is up to 100-something volumes in English at this point that we're recording this. This is at 86. Uh, as we're recording this, Viz just started their digital release of the current chapters of Detective Conan. So I'm hoping that that will speed this up a little bit and get it caught up to Japan in the, in the graphic novel format they're well over 100 in japan right now yeah they're pretty close to what one piece is even though this started way earlier than one piece aoyama takes a lot of breaks because i think the magazine just wants conan to keep going as long as possible i think the end in sight is the end is in sight though i really do but yeah i never get bored with it i love case closed i love conan i love aoyama's artwork then we have another Shonen Sunday series, Spriggan. This was released a long time ago by Viz as Striker, um, as sort of the, the comic books back in the comic book format days. Uh, but now that now Dark, uh, no, not Dark Horse, uh, Seven Seven, Seven Seas, Seas is is doing it. I think it's got one more volume before it'll be complete in English. But it's a really fun series. Sort of Indiana Jones meets James Bond meets Ghost in the Shell. Uh, high octane action and we've left this shelf mostly kind of empty because conan will yeah spill into this the shelf next to spriggan you see the three volumes of joan this is by the character designer from mobile suit gundam uh i love his artwork it's only three volumes 
you can easily find this. This was by Comics One, who we have a few series by. Yoshikazu Yasuhiko, as you can see. It's is about it, Joan of Arc, yeah. Is it's, it color art? Yeah, mm. it's full color. Uh, just the three volumes. Here's Lupin the Third's Greatest Hits, uh, Greatest Heights, Heists, rather. Uh, we didn't get Lupin when it was originally released by Tokyo Pop. And yeah, it's sort of one of those series that I think everybody should own, those kind of classic manga series. So I was glad that Seven Seas at least put out this sort of best of and I think they're going to do a second volume this year. I wish I wish the the actual full series would get re-released. It's not a long series, so I mean it's easy to it's definitely to do. doable. Here's Monster by Naoki Urasawa. Uh Viz originally published his Pineapple Army, which was his first sort of series. They tried that for a while early 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 in Viz's history and it didn't get an entire run. But then Monster did, and so this was sort of his first kind of proper introduction to Western English-speaking audiences. A uh, story of a doctor pursuing a sort of genocidal serial killer. Um, really serious, somewhat dark. Much lighter is Master Keaton. Again, I, I know I mentioned Indiana Jones with Spriggan. This is also sort of that. It's a archaeologist slash uh, insurance claims adjuster. And he sort of travels the world and gets involved in all these sort of international archaeological expeditions. It's really fun. It's a great series. That's the entirety of it that Viz put out as well. And then next to that, you see 20th Century Boys. One of my favorites of uh, Urasawa's really deals with sort of uh, 1960s culture. It spans multiple decades of uh, these group of small children's lives into their adulthood and then into this kind of cultish sort of post-apocalyptic whodunit. They're trying to figure out which one of their friends is this cult leader, this anonymous cult leader. Uh, and then 21st Century Boys, the two-volume postscript really i mean it, it's really part of the, the whole series it's not really a separate series um just a really fantastic uh work to me this is what sort of launched him i would say in in english but i, I you could debate maybe monster was yes it. probably is it's definitely his most popular series he was he's a, a long time sort of big comic original big comic spirits uh artist as well Here's Mujirushi. This is a single volume story of his. It kind of crosses over with some of Fujio Akatsuka's characters. It's just a fun little one volume thing. It'd be a good way to enter if you are curious about Urasawa's work. That'd be a good introduction to it. Next to that is Sneeze, which is a collection of his short stories. Again, you know, Viz hasn't been shying away from publishing short stories in the past few years, so I really do hope they do the rest of Takahashi's. Beside that is Pluto. This is Urasawa's reimagining of the most famous Astro Boy storyline. Uh, it's really good. It's getting an anime finally later this year. And then here's his newest work, his current work in the United States and Japan, Asadora. I think this is all caught up to where they are in Japan, actually. If you liked 20th Century Boys, you will like Asadora. It deals with a lot of the same themes, sort of the same time period, 1960s. Uh, a lot of nostalgia mixed with science fiction rather than sort of a cult. This one's more of a kaiju. And then here we have Firefighter Daigo, a Fire Company M. This is one of those sort of rare series that yeah, I'm amazed got licensed over here. This was in Shonen Sunday as well. It ran alongside Inuyasha. It's really, really fun. I like Soda's artwork a lot. It's just a straight up firefighter manga. So it's got a lot of action. It's got a lot of intensity. It's 20 volumes, so it's not really super long it's really good though it's a lot of fun we like these series that are kind of on unusual topics like you know gamblers and firefighters and just things you don't often see 
uh, being translated, I think, makes these appealing in a way. And if you haven't noticed, which I'm sure anybody who's watched this far into the video has, we get introduced to a lot of this stuff through Shonen Sunday because that's where, obviously, all of Rumiko Takahashi stuff runs. And as you saw earlier, we're, we buy a lot of Shonen Sundays and we follow a lot of what's what's in that. So now if we shift over to the next, uh, another one of our Shonen Jump uh, series that we have always been fascinated with, Fist of the North Star. Again, this is one of those series I can remember the Nintendo game back in the 80s uh, when we were in elementary school came out without any context really as to that it was a longer manga series. Um, this is a series that had kind of started and stopped in America, sort of like Ursi Atsura, um, finally getting a really nice format. Uh, there's no question that they'll publish the whole thing now. Uh, we're really thrilled to buy it. Uh, just an empty shelf here, and then we transition down to the next one. Sainar Azetsubo Sensei. This is a, a great series by Koji Kumeda. Again, he's someone that we were familiar with through Shonen Sunday. That was his longtime home. Uh, he was, I would say, sort of a mid-tier artist there. Did not have uh, a lot of sort of anime adaptations coming out of his Sunday work, like Southern Ice Hockey Club and Kateni Kaizo. Left, went to Shonen Magazine, and then had a major hit with uh, Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. Uh, a, a great series. Uh, unfortunately, they did not finish it in, in the U.S. Um, was put out by Del Rey, then Kodansha got the license back, and then they did not finish publishing it. We have we have everything that they did publish, which is, is not enough, uh, unfortunately. I wish I wish they would conclude it. It's a it's a challenging series to translate probably. It's a lot of topics. And here we have Viz's run of Golgo thirteen in graphic novel editions. Viz had published some single issues of Golgo very early on. Uh, no, Leeds did, right? Yeah, it wasn't Viz. Leeds, which I don't is... think it was Viz. Uh Golgo is great, super assassin. This is, you know, grown man manga at its finest. Uh, you can see here, these. this was so 13 volumes of Golgo's kind of greatest cases, his greatest assassination attempts. Uh, it's got a lot of real world events in it. This volume that we're looking at here, yeah, is the... <laughs> Controversial, I guess you could say, storyline of Princess Diana's death and Golgo's <laughs> involvement in her assassination, perhaps? But yeah, Golgo's a lot of fun. I, I hope they do more of Golgo in English. I think there's very little chance of that, though. Here we see another iconic shoujo series. Anybody who is our age and was able to sort of experience sort of the second coming of anime on television. You know, early on it was Star Blazers and Robotech, which is Yamato and Macross. But then when we were a little bit older, it was Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon on TV. And so we would wake up every morning at 5.30 in the morning to catch Sailor Moon. Grew up, you know, in middle school and high school loving Sailor Moon didn't want to invest in the Tokyo pop versions of the manga simply because I thought it was kind of questionably handled and so was really happy when Kodansha put it out again and eagerly scooped it up Gingaku Picasso this is by Usamaru Furuya he did shortcuts uh, that was collected in pulp the the Viz magazine um, this is a, a, a short series uh, the third volume is kind of sunk down there. The riser, it doesn't quite fit the, the bookcase, but the third volume is back there. Um, dealing with him trying to sort of solve problems through drawing and sketching people's sort of nightmares and the things that sort of bother them. Really interesting, really sort of innovative series. I was excited that they brought out something else by him after Shortcuts, which is tonally very different. Then Claymore. Uh, Claymore... Is, is a great series. Another, It's a, a, a jump series from their monthly magazine, Jump Square. Uh, very much, I would say, if you, if you like something like Berserk, kind of that dark fantasy sort of vibe to it, uh, a group of women, uh, dozens of women uh, called Claymores uh, that fight against these demons. They themselves kind of have to keep their powers in check uh, or they can sort of push too far and sort of become these creatures themselves. Great artwork. Uh, by Yagi, who 
is now or just finished publishing in Shonen Sunday. I don't think he's had any other series released in English uh, that I that I can remember. I no. wish that would change. Ariadne is the the series that he uh, has just wrapped up recently in Shonen Sunday. Um, but uh, a, a, a really great artist, really detailed work, uh, and very dark tones. Then we have Oishinbo. This ran in Big Comic Spirits uh, alongside Maison Ikoku. It is definitely one of my favorites. It is a food manga. This is not even remotely close to everything that was published in Japanese. But uh, obviously, I do own everything that Viz put out of it. This is sort of a sampler. They're randomly chosen storylines that are based around a different food theme. So it's kind of difficult to say if you go in blind and have absolutely no knowledge of what Oishinbo is as an overarching story that this would be great. But... It's the only thing you're going to be able to get. And this is one of the highest selling manga of all time in Japan. This is an incredibly famous series. Probably the yeah. quintessential food manga. Uh, I, I really, really love it. And I, I highly recommend it. It just makes me feel warm and cozy every time I read it. Incredibly I, long. In yeah, Japan. it is. It's over 100 volumes. And Got some controversy. I don't know if it'll finish. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, and then we have uh, Gambling Apocalypse Kaiji. Do not let the art fool you. This series is really suspenseful. It's excellent. The pacing, the art is, you know, I think some people would say the art is terrible or the art is bad. It's really not. You get used to it, and it really works well for the series. It's a gambling manga. If you like Squid Game, this is what Squid Game was based on. Realistically, this is. Kaiji's excellent. It's great. Next to that is the uh, Atomic Bomb manga, Barefoot Gin. Uh, it's it's ten volumes. Uh, we we I I just was given this for Christmas. The first three volumes. Uh, so I we don't have the the whole set. This is a fairly new edition using the sort of original Project Gin translation. Um, it was used sort of as an educational manga before manga had its you know big successes uh, in in the international market. Uh, it's a, it's a harrowing story. Uh, no doubt about that, but uh, very good, very sort of um, fascinating sort of depiction. The artist, uh, he was from uh, Hiroshima, and so he's detailing ex sort of experiences of his own, embellishing them, uh, and sort of uh, vi revisiting his, his own childhood. This is With the Light. This is an unusual manga. This is a Jose manga uh, for uh, older women uh, dealing with a family that had an autistic child. Uh, this is a manga that came out here after we had finished school. I can just remember going to the bookstore and sort of picking it up and thinking, again, it was just such an unusual topic. Like, And, and I think we are fascinated with these sort of uh, odd manga, like about firefighters or gamblers and things. And this was, was one that uh, was just interesting and unique. Uh, it's a little melodramatic, for sure. Uh, you know, neighbors that sort of you can't believe how sort of the misunderstandings that they have about autism and it's sort of in in very sort of funny in some ways terms sort of deals with the sort of challenges of raising an autistic child again he like gets up on a skyscraper it, it sometimes it seems sort of unbelievable the sort of challenges that they deal with with their child but more prosaic too like getting him in school finding a daycare that can help him and things like that too and then we have Tutera. This is a legendary science fiction manga, science fiction shoujo manga. I actually just picked this up. This is the entire series, this three volumes. So I haven't gotten to read it yet, but I definitely wanted it for our collection. Shortcuts, this is the one I was talking about earlier. This is uh, Gengaku Picasso, Usamaru Furuya, the same artist. These are gag strips, essentially. Uh, I really love these in pulp. It's, it's, it's two volumes. I only have one volume. Uh, and then next to that is our final volume, I think. Yeah. This is... Here, I'm showing a look here at the cover of, of Shortcuts here before we go to that last manga. Um, again, he has really unique art for you. I, I really like his, his art. Some of it's very kind of sketch-like. Uh, I, 
I'm trying to remember if he has had much else, and I feel like he has. Uh, but I think a lot uh, of his stuff's gotten translated. It hasn't. Okay, I guess I guess we just haven't picked it up. Um, and then we're going to go to this last series, which is probably one of the earlier chronological mangas that we own. This is Bat Kid by Inoue Kazuo. Uh, Pre World War II. This is really forty seven. Huh? Nineteen forty seven. Was it? So. No, I guess that's not then. Uh, really, really, really simplistic manga about a kid who wants to play baseball. And it's definitely interesting to see sort of a historical look at manga and see sort of the starting point in that sort of simplistic early days of a storyline not having to be anything more complicated than a kid wanting to get a baseball bat so he can play with his local friends. So that's our collection. Uh, what would you say? Is there anything that we don't own that we you wish you had or that they would bring out? Uh, Roku Danashi Blues is one that I've always said. I think Area 88 would be a cool one. Um, what do you think? Are there? You want? You, I know you want more Oishinbo. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want more Oishinbo. Takashi short stories. Short stories is uh, definitely that. Everything in our collection does sort of revolve around Takahashi. Uh, we've been introduced to pretty much everything in our collection one way or another through Rumiko Takahashi. So thank you. Thank you for watching, and uh, we hope to uh, continue to produce more videos. Thank you again.